gone here in Florida and I've got aching knees. And I don't mean these knees. I'm talking about these knees. And probably like most MVN guys, we know if we've at least spent a little bit of time on the forums or online or, or with these machines, that the absolute weak point in this machine, the weakest point in this machine is the knee gear or the gear that turns the uh, knee screw that lifts the knee up and down. The, the knee gears are a set of pinion gears that mesh to give us a 90 degree movement. Shaft goes in, turns 90 degrees, goes down. And at that 90 degree turn are those pinion gears. For some reason, it looks like they either used substandard material to make the gears or they just built them too weak. They should have built a little bit heavier, built a little bit larger gear. The table is rated to lift about 350 pounds and I believe probably the knee and the table together are about 400 pounds. So that's 750 pounds that it potentially could lift. For the size gear that's in there, that, that seems like quite a lot of weight. So, so I was determined to go out and try to find a way to kind of alleviate this problem. Now, my first thought was to simply pull those gears out of there, buy some aftermarket gears, just blanks, and turn them to the right size and reinstall them and boom, be done. And if these gears ever do give out, well, that's what I'll do. Right now, they're still working, but you get to the point where maybe you think that it would be best to assist these gears to help them along. So yeah. I started following along with some of the other guys to see what they were doing. And a lot of guys were just saying, you know, I can't crank this, it's too much. Uh, the first thing you do, or you should do, when you think that it's too hard to crank is one, make sure you get your gibbs adjusted properly. Uh, make sure it's lubricated well. And if necessary, uh, tear it down and make sure you just don't have a lot of varnished up surfaces. Those surfaces, it, when they get too much oil, or they, they've had oil over time that sat there and it hasn't moved, meaning fresh oil hasn't been introduced to it, will cause a varnishing effect. And another problem that you do see, and it, it should not affect the knee so much, is grease. A lot of these machines, before you get them, have grease in them, and a grease is a no-no on these machines. So make sure all that grease is out of there, if there's any grease in there. Make sure it has good lubricant, fresh lubricant, that the ways themselves in the dovetails aren't mess messed up or varnished up and that of course you have the gibbs adjusted properly now when i got my machine and let's get in a little bit closer here when i got my machine it originally came with this little uh, cd handle here that uh really just made turning this thing a pain in the butt it just it didn't allow me to crank this up easily so I don't know where that came from. Supposedly this machine came out of a school out in Arizona high school. And I would assume that probably the school had lost the handle and put that on there. Like a lot of MVN guys, I just went ahead and got a, a bridge port handle here. This allows for easy cranking. I can move this up and down with no issue with this handle. Uh, a lot of guys try to put the, the bridge port style finger section on here to match with the fingers to go here. I just milled the fingers off and then milled this square on the inside and used the original square. So it just goes right on like that. No problem when I'm not using it. And I just turned around. It sits in there like that. So one of the questions I had to ask when I started looking at whether whether utilizing a a power lift on this was what would it be too much for the power lift and so I decided to check it out so I got a socket here to uh, put on the end and I got my torque wrench here this is a beam style torque wrench and the power feeds that you'll purchase are either 150 inch pounds or 450 inch pounds so this is a 200 inch pounder so we'll put this on here and when I pull on this Look at that. It's turning at approximately 150, 60, 70, 80 inch pounds. I'm going to do that without the camera. 
right up there. Yeah, I can see it better this way. It's turning at a hundred and just shy of a hundred and sixty inch pounds right there. So I might be able to get away with the 150 inch pound model. I think probably it would be wise to go with a 450, but I really don't want to do that. I, I don't mind hand cranking this. I don't use this in a production capacity. I don't, I don't move the knee up and down constantly, so it's really not a big issue. I just would like to make it a little bit easier for me to crank up and down. And you can see it's not so bad, but it, it does get tiring when I do have to do it. So I came to the conclusion that maybe I should get a little bit of assistance. So if you spend any time around machinery at all, you may have seen that some of these newer pieces of equipment with uh, stepper motors or server motors that move the, the tables up and down, a lot of them will use a spring assist. And the spring I'm talking about is this type of spring right here. These are nitrogen filled uh, gas springs and you probably will most commonly see them like on the hatchback of your car or if you own an RV the the doors that pop open uh, most of those are are sub 100 psi assists though knowing that this table this part here and this part here are coming in at close to 400 pounds I decided that I would go ahead and get 200 pound assist and I don't mean 200 pounds total I mean 200 each. So we're going to go ahead and put these gas cylinders on here and see what they'll do to help us get this knee going up and down a little bit more easily and help my arm from being worn out. So where are we going to mount them? Well, good question. Most of the time on your automated equipment you'll see these cylinders mounted right close in like this near the dovetail itself but on this side I have the Gibbs and that would make it a little bit awkward. I mean, I could knock it back like this a little bit at an angle, maybe, and do it that way. Uh, but when I get over to the other side, over here, I have a problem that I have my, I have my scales for the DRO, and that's going to go ahead and create some issues. So what I decided to do was simply just move them outboard. We're going to put them out here straight down. Uh, I thought originally moving it in line with with the screw, but down here at the bottom you have this taper out effect here, which would put the cylinder out here. So we're going to go ahead and move it right out here, right underneath where the load is almost all the time. So let's get to it. Okay, so first step is getting our knee up nice and high which we've done second step is going to be placing our cylinders now we're going to put them right about in here let's make sure they'll fit on both sides there and yes they will and what i did was before we got started i made up these uh blocks here got one hole down through there for a bolt and I got two holes on this side and we're going to put our ball in here. We're going to mount them flat down here on the floor and bolt them down just like that. So we need to gauge where we're going to put those. So we're going to bring the this baby up here like this and it looks like it's going to have to fit in right about there. I'm going to have to mark that. Hang on. And I'm just going to use a scribe. This, because I'm using balls here, n nothing has to be absolutely perfectly lined. Because the balls will allow for any... There we go. So that should line up just like that. Yeah. Alright, let me check the other one. All right, so I got my two scribe marks. Let's go ahead and uh, punch those and do some drilling. Okay, so let's get these cylinders on there and see where they fall. Okay, so we got the top ball locked and in place. Now we're going to line up the bottom one. 
And if I just let this hang free, it's sort of like a plumb bob. So all I really need to do is just come over here and figure out approximately where that ball will center in there. And I do have a little bit of a rise right there. So this will come out probably an eighth to a quarter of an inch, but that's okay. So it looks like that's right there about where we want it. And now we'll go line up the other side. Okay, so we pop that side in and we've got her hanging loose. Gonna find out what's straight up and down here. And this one's still loose as well. I didn't want to bolt anything down until I knew everything was right. So that looks uh bring in just a little bit more. That looks just about right right there. Let's go ahead and start the drilling. <laughs> And I'll just make my mark and move this out of the way. All right, let's line that back up. And let me go get some bolts. All right, I wanted to make sure we had the right size bolts before we did any more tapping here. And we do, so. get these bolted in so far so good okay so one or two things are going to happen when I start letting this down either one overestimated the weight here and these springs are just going to hold everything up in the air or two it should ease the burden on the screw uh, when I crank it so let's see what happens okay is it coming down it is it's coming down on those springs and is it easier to turn this crank handle I don't know yeah it is actually Bring it down quite a ways and then see what it does. Seems easier to turn, that's for sure. We'll find out. It's always at the bottom where it seems to be the hardest to crank. Obviously that 400 pounds is pretty damn close if, if that nut's starting to rise, but it's not going anywhere because there's a keeper in there for it, so I'm not too concerned about that. But the springs at this point seem to be doing what they're supposed to do. The cranking effort doesn't seem as high. We'll find out when we put a torque wrench on it. That's pretty good, I'll tell you. Guess I must be tired because it's uh, it's a lot better than I thought it was or what it felt like. Let's see what that is. I'm hoping I can get that in the camera. Oh my lord. She's turning at about 50 inch pounds. Down from that, what, 160 did we say? So we, we reduced the turning effort of this by two thirds. That, that's just amazing. I mean, you can still feel friction in there, or friction, but the turning effort is heavily reduced. My goodness, there it hits 40 and it pops at about 50 to 60. So we'll say 55 inch pounds of turning to 150, 160. That's a third of, of what it was. That's, I was beginning to think this might've been a failure, but I'll tell you what, when you can take the effort required to move this and reduce it by two thirds, I'd say that's pretty darn good. So it removes two thirds of the, the pressure off those pinion gears in there which would probably make them last, I would think, 
uh, much longer. So I don't know if anybody else would be considering a modification like this, but honestly, for the time it took, uh, beginning to end, uh, the cost, I think I spent under $45 for everything here to reduce the turning effort by two thirds. And I'm assuming with taking that amount of pressure off the pinion gears, I, I would think would probably make them last quite a bit longer. So I think this is probably a good modification to make. Again, these are 32 inch uh, nitrogen gas struts, 200 PSI rated each. So they have a lifting capacity of 400 pounds. And you can pick them up in just about any uh, larger auto parts store, online through Amazon. These are actually USA made. Uh, I got these on sale. Uh, so I'm pretty happy with everything. So I guess that's about it. To all you MVN guys and everybody else that's following me uh, from Florida, Don out.